So, you finish Limgrave and have made it into Lyurnia of the Lakes, whether that be by defeating Godric the Grafted or by skipping Stormvale entirely, and it's starting to dawn on you, this game is kinda... really big. Well, I have a recommended route you can take at this point, and I'm also going to give you some advice on the areas immediately beyond Lyurnia. So, that means there will be some spoilers ahead of here. Also, before I start, I always recommend that you explore, have fun, and create your own route. First things first, if you haven't finished Stormvale and you're feeling comfortable with it, at any point in time, I recommend heading back to complete Stormvale and defeat Godric. If you're having trouble with him, you can summon the Feli Lu to aid you in battle, as well as your Spirit Ashes. When you defeat Godric, head back to the Stormvale main gate site of Grace and head right on through it, up and to the east near the Giant Wolf. Take him on or run past and you'll find the Limgrave Tower Bridge and the way to reach the Divine Tower of Limgrave. Head up here and activate the Great Rune Godric dropped. At this point, you can equip Godric's Great Rune at any site of Grace, which will raise all of your attributes, so a pretty nice minor boon to have. With Stormvale out of the way, you start at the Lake Facing Cliffs. To the west, before heading down, you can find the Church of Erith, Sorcerer Topes, and more importantly, a Sacred Tear for upgrading the power of your Flasks of Tears. At this point, you should be at plus 5. If you miss the churches that contain these, the 4th Church of America is located on the Weeping Peninsula here, the Church of Pilgrimage is located on the Weeping Peninsula here, the Kalu Baptismal Church is located on the Weeping Peninsula here, and the 3rd Church of America is located in Limgrave, right by Mistwood here, in the same location as the Flask of Wondrous Physic. At this point, might as well give Topes 10 runes, as it will continue his questline and make it so he'll sell you some basic spells. He also gives you info on how to enter the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, our next legacy dungeon, and which is currently closed off to outsiders. Sacred Tear in a hand, we're going to start exploring Lyurnia, which is a little different than Limgrave. It doesn't have quite as many dungeons tightly compressed in, but still has plenty to find. Start by heading east and north along the Lyurnia Highway, where you can find your first map fragment. In between the highway north and south sites of Grace, you can find a dungeon, the Cliff Bottom Catacombs, that I recommend heading into. From here, the question is, do you explore the flooded Academy Gate Town first, or along the cliffside of Lyurnia East? There is, of course, no real right answer here, but I'm going to recommend you continue heading northeast along the cliff, as this will take you to an artist's shack where you find another painting you can look for. Continue north along here, and eventually you'll find the Church of Vows. I take you here for two reasons. For one, Muriel, Pastor of Vows, which is awesome in itself because he's a giant turtle. But also, he happens to sell both sorceries and incantations, meaning he's a good find for any spellcasting builds. Additionally, you can give him any spellbook or prayer book you found, so he can act as a teacher, which makes him a super important NPC. There are other characters who you can learn these from, but it's always good to find another. The other reason I wanted to take you here is because the Church of Vows is where you can atone for your sins and ask for absolution. Basically, what that means is if you hit a friendly NPC and they're now mad at you, instead of killing them, you can ask for absolution and they'll now be friendly again. That said, it takes a pretty rare item to do this, called Celestial Dew, so don't abuse it. Next up, warp back to the Lyurnia Highway north side of Grace, or Gate Town Bridge side of Grace, and let's head into the flooded Academy Gate Town. If you want, head to the south end for Stillwater Cave, but it is filled with poison, so be careful. What I mainly want to take you to is Academy Gate Town in the center of the map. Here you can find another Golden Seed. Additionally, if you run up north and to the east, you'll find a Walking Mausoleum and the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. The Crystallium boss fight here isn't as bad as it might initially seem, as after hitting the Crystallium enough times, you basically break the crystal and start doing massive damage. For defeating the Crystallium, you'll get the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 1. Take this back to the Round Table Hold, and you can exchange it to be able to purchase as many Smithing Stone 1s and 2s as you like. So if you don't like the weapon you've been leveling up, this will give you the perfect opportunity to level up and try something new. So, before we tackle Rhea Lucaria, let's actually head to the north side of the map and to the northern Lyurnia Lake shore. Just south of that is the Sorcerer's Isle and Tessu's Rise. If you can solve the puzzle, which is basically just finding a bunch of phantom turtles and hitting them, you'll be able to go inside and get a Memory Stone. Memory Stones are viable for any magic-wielding build, as they increase your memory slots, meaning you can equip more magic at once as well as more powerful magic. 
Head north here to Caria Manor. Caria Manor can be pretty difficult, so if you're having trouble progressing, skip this step and head into Seofer River and Einsel River, which are going to be what's coming up next. Once you conquer Caria Manor, beyond that you'll find the Three Sisters, which refers to three towers. Ronnie's Rise, Rena's Rise, and Celevis's Rise. The middle of these towers is Ronnie's Rise, and where we're going to head next. I take you here because it kicks off a quest that leads to an option for how you want to finish the game, and because you'll be directly told how to get to Seofer River, if you haven't found it yet, and told to meet Blythe there. You should now be at the perfect level to handle and take on Seofer River, so we're going to head there next. To do that, we head back to Limgrave and Mistwood. Southeast of the Mistwood outskirts, or directly south of the Third Church America, is the Seofer River Well, right next to Mistwood's minor Erd tree. Head down the well for one of the game's coolest surprises, Seofer River and the supposed location of Nakron the Eternal City. I cannot stress how much I love Seofer River, and how aesthetically cool this underground city is, with its eternal night sky thanks to what I believe are lit up glintstones. Seofer River is pretty large in and of itself, so have fun exploring it and taking it on. Once you finish Seofer River, I have another surprise for you. Seofer River wasn't the only secret underground area. Now is the perfect time to access and find Einsel River. Remember how I had you find the Church of Vows earlier in this video? Well, head down the cliffside here from the Church of Vows in Liurnia, and pretty much exactly east of here is the Einsel River Well, which will take you down into another underground location. From here, have fun exploring Einsel River, the Old Palace Runes, and Noxtella, the Eternal City. Einsel River is a little more challenging than Seofer River, but also super cool and well worth the visit. At this point, it's time. Time to head west in Liurnia. On west side, you'll find the Four Belfries, which is a super cool location with warps to otherwise closed off areas. Additionally, you'll find the village of the Albinorix. This is a critical location. I'm not going to spoil anything here, but make sure you mark it on your map and try to really really fully explore every nook and cranny of it. Another location I want you to find is the Lakeside Crystal Cave. It's here on the map, but the entrance is actually along the marshy swamp area of Liurnia. For getting through it, you'll find the Slumbering Wolf Shack, another area I want you to mark. Alright, all that said and done, let's head into Rail Lucaria. To start, head up through Academy Gate Town to the southern entrance, where you'll find a note telling you that the princess is in another castle. Or rather, a hint on how to find an Academy Glintstone Key, or your ticket into Rhea Lucaria. The map isn't the greatest, but it points here, where you'll have to fight off against a dragon. Defeat the dragon and explore the area, and you'll find your very own Academy Glintstone Key, and the way into the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. I don't want to say too much about the Academy, but there is one interesting thing I'll point out. At the bottom of the giant lift, there's an abductor virgin. Watch out for this specific one, because it really does abduct you if it grabs you and kills you. If that happens, you'll be transported all the way over to the Volcano Manor and have quite the challenge ahead of you. And that's everything I've got for you for Liurnia. If you enjoyed this, let me know and I'll make a recommended path guide covering the next section of the game, past Liurnia. After Liurnia, there's basically three areas you can choose between and the game really ratchets up in difficulty. Don't give up skeleton, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.